Don Armstrong at the world famous U.S. Toy Magic Shop here in Leewood, Kansas. It's a really amazing shop, by the way. Really cool. Fantastic. Largest in the world, is that true? Yep. Largest in the world. Very nice, very nice. So I'm just going to ask uh, John a few questions here just to get to know him a little bit better. Sure. Are you ready for this? All right, let's go. Question number one. What was the very first magic trick you ever learned? I think the first trick I ever learned was actually a mathematical sort of pile spelling type trick uh, my uh, uh, guy, my cousin, showed me. But um, I, my, but really very soon after that, my dad showed me how to do a, um, a center, not a center deal, but a second deal when I was a kid, which was kind of bizarre, right? And that's where probably where the, my love of sleight of hand and all that came from. Good. Very nice. Uh, who were your top three influences first starting out? Uh, I would say uh, Martin Nash, because he was the first guy who did, for, that I saw, that did, did like a, all cards, and I love card magic. It was like a character, it was a full performance, and that was really, really imp uh, important to me. And then Tom Mollica, because he did mostly cards up until the Cigarette Act, and uh, I saw him lecture, and I was a huge, because he was so funny, and I, and I loved the, the humor and being able to do all this really great magic but still be very funny. And uh, never seen that close up before. And then uh, being able to see footage, I never got to see the man or meet the man, but I got to see Don Allen and, and on, you know, on tape essentially. Uh, and uh, Don had a very big uh, impact on me. So that's when I started out. Then later on, I had other influences. Uh, I finally saw Juan Tamarez, and of course, it's been a big uh, influence. Um, Leonard Green, just that out of the box thinking he does. Um, but those first three guys were definitely the ones who started when I was a kid who I looked up to. Perfect. Uh, how about non-magical influences? Non-magical influences. Well, I, uh, I'm so always impressed by stand-up comedians who can act just like do their acts and, and talk to the audience and, and, and not have to uh, uh, rely on any kind of prop or whatever. So they're really, really great comedians who are, the, who are themselves. Um, Paul Reiser, who I, it's kind of funny, I get to actually work with him now at the Comedy Magic Club in, in, uh, in uh, Hermosa Beach. I remember seeing his act and thinking, you know, how it, conversational and, and it was, you know, and good it was. Um, and then, like, I would say a lot of, uh, like, like as far as character stuff for myself, I love the show Doctor Who, uh, and it's the idea that the this, the guy was this, you know, sort of an eccentric genius time traveler and putting all that stuff into uh, into my own head as I was performing and giving myself sort of a persona or a character. Um, so that's kind of an influence as well. Nice. So, do you prefer books or DVDs? Uh, I think both have their place, um, but uh, you can learn, I think, better uh, from a book. You learn, you can process it. Uh, DVDs are very good for mimicking. They're very good for picking up something so you understand what it looks like as a fluid motion. Um, but the problem is, is that mimicking? Then you instantly sort of, you know, end up performing like that performer, um, whether you realize it or not. You know, and I've seen guys, uh, I was in Australia, and a guy had my DVDs, and he was talking to me normally in an Australian accent. And then when he would start doing one of my tricks, it was just bizarre. He would like stop the Australian, he was speaking like me and my inflection, and you know, without the accent even, it was just bizarre. You know, he didn't even realize he was doing that, you know? And uh, so, so that's that, but I mean, yeah, they're both good learning tools. You just have to be, uh, I think you actually have to look, uh, work harder to learn and make uh, the stuff you learn on DVDs your, uh, your own. Good. Let's see. You are the co-creator of Smoke and Mirrors Comics. Yes, I am. Um, can you talk a little bit about how that first came about? How that uh, my good friend, uh, Mike Costa, who writes the book, uh, he's a comic book writer, writes for the G.I. Joe book, Cobra, and uh, for, for, for DC and a few other places. And um, we became friends at the Magic Castle. And uh, another, I've always sort of hung in this world I was the crazy magician that hung out with uh, all these comic book guys, and other comic book um, publishers say, "Hey, you know, this would be a really cool thing. You should do like a comic book on magic." And I'm like, "You know," he said, "You should, you should teach magic." And, I'm like, eh. and as I found out more and more about it, I realized it'd be co much cooler if it actually performed magic for the reader as opposed to teaching it. And I brought this idea to Mike, and Mike said, "Okay, let's do this." We ran with it, and we pitched it to a bunch of places, and, and finally, the nice people at IDW picked it up and essentially where that happened. And then Ryan Brown, who does all the art, who's amazing, uh, does all the hard work, really, all the, uh, all the drawing, 
Uh, he uh, came on board because he's a good friend of Mike's, and uh, this was a, a, a good, uh, the three of us were good sort of collaborators to come and uh, move the project forward. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Cool. You mentioned the Magic Castle. Yes. Uh, you're on the board of directors. I am the right? uh, board of trustees. I am the chairman of the board of trustees. Cool. So what does that job entail? Uh, the, the trustees are the artistic side of the academy. We run the shows, the lectures, uh, anything magic related uh, at the club. We are the ones who are in uh, direct control of that. And uh, the board of directors, they're the, the upper board. They're the ones who deal with the finance and the operations, that sort of thing. Um, and on my board, uh, technically reports to them. But we're the board who, you know, gets, uh, you know, we decide how um, the artistic direction of the academy is that's probably the best way to put it. Gotcha. Very nice. So you make your living traveling the world with a deck of cards. I do sometimes, yes. It happens. <laughs> so what do you do in your free time? If uh, you have free time? I read comics. As I, I'm still very much into that. Uh, love uh, TV movies, especially Doctor Who. still watch that show a lot. Um, really, really uh, like going to theme parks, travel a lot. And uh, with uh, my wife, with my wife's... Uh, also usually able to come with me on a lot of things. She's not here with me right now, but because she has one of those jobs where she can work pretty much wherever, anywhere. So uh, she comes with me and um, get to hang out. It's good, it's good time. Good, yeah. So uh, how else can we see you? Website, Facebook, Twitter? You can see me on Twitter at, uh, at Carjohn, C-A-R-D-J-O-N. Uh, you can also see me on uh, the, the Facebook, same thing, at, uh, or slash, Facebook slash Carjohn. My website is www.carjohn.com, it's all Carjohn. Pretty much, just type card on in somewhere in there. Just make sense. Perfect. Well, thank you yeah. very much for your time. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys.